they don't make the sphere. They start the long process of creating Highland Park single malt Scotch whiskey. Spirit of all. around here because you wouldn't normally find a distillery perched on top of a hill but there are springs right underneath Highland Park and there's a spring just below the hill down at Crantit Dairy if anybody knows where that is and another one between here and the airport called Catty Maggie's Quarry. Catty Maggie apparently was the leader of a band of tinkers about a hundred years ago and she used to camp by this quarry hence it's called Catty Maggie's Quarry. The barley you see normally fills up this loft but they're not making whiskey at the moment because of holidays and maintenance. So they've kind of let it go back a bit. It comes, the barley comes from Scotland, England, Ireland, anywhere but Orkney. <coughs> <laughs> we grow a lot of barley in Orkney actually, but the farmers really grow it for their own use. And so therefore there probably wouldn't be enough for the distillery. Also, I know it's going to come as a great surprise to you, but our harvest is very late in the year and tends to be a bit damp. So <laughs> we'll put a chemical on it called popcorn to preserve it, and that would ruin your whiskey and not do your stomachs an awful lot of good at all. <laughs> so this barley, if anybody can reach down to feel it, is very, very dry. And those thin corners? Barley's just start to germinate. And then it's called malt, green malt. It's not barley anymore. So you see that this one is empty and these two have barley in them but no water. But you can see the line where the water would come up. germinating. So they lay it on a perforated metal floor about 10 metres up from here and they light this fire underneath it. Now this fire isn't drying any malt at all, it's just keeping us warm today. <laughs> but normally it would be a lot bigger and it would go straight back there. They use coke on the bottom to get it glowing and then they put peat on the top. The peat adds flavour to the malt. So instead of smoking fish, they're smoking their malt with peat smoke. It's one of the things that gives Highland Park such a distinctive taste is because the malt is smoked with a peat. It burns for 48 hours. In that time there's men on shift work keeping an eye on it because it doesn't want it to get too hot. If it gets too hot, you'll get a burnt taste with your malt. And at the same time, if it's not hot enough, it's not done its job right. They cut their peat in Orfa, which is about five miles from here. So they always have the same peat, hence the same taste. 
Whereas if you went to another part of the island, you would, could possibly get a different flavour with your tea. see this morning because there's a man working on it. But it looks like a giant coffee grinder actually. A great big maroon coloured coffee grinder. So take that malt and then let it rest for four or five weeks in wooden base. And they're not very sure why they've got to let it rest. Because obviously it would be an awful lot better if they could hurry the process on. But they've tried and discovered they don't get as good an end product. So they let it rest. about 60 centigrade and it all goes into this round thing called a mash tub. They swirl it about and they make a great big bowl of porridge in there. They then circulate the water or the liquid around through the underback balance vessel to the bowl of pipe and around and around for about 20-25 minutes. It then sits for another 20 minutes. They pump that liquid out which is then called wort cool it and put it over there to the wooden wash bags. So then bring in more water at about 80 centigrade, swirl it about and let it sit for 45 minutes. Then pump that liquid out, cool it and put it to the wooden wash bags. Then they bring in a third lot of water at 90 centigrade and they wash the whole thing out to get it nice and clean inside. That liquid is called sparge and it goes to the tanks behind you. It doesn't actually have enough goodness in it but it's got too much goodness to waste. So they use that on the next mash, kind of like a starter. The same goes with the water that's been calling the wort down. It gets hot, so that water goes into these tanks. So when they start the next mash, they don't actually need to heat up an awful lot. The malt that's left in this mash tun, they're finished with, and they don't need it anymore. So they sack that up and use it for cattle feed and it's called draft. They need to cool the liquid down before it goes to the wooden wash backs because they add yeast in the wash backs and obviously if your liquid's too hot you'll kill off all your yeast and then you won't get any whiskey at all. And it's not a good idea to do it. <laughs> starts working and gets very foamy and comes right up to the top. So they have a blade on the top there, a switcher blade, that disperses the foam. It works to a certain extent but it still squirts out the sides and it squirts out the lid if it's really working hard.
had a great deal, or used to have a great deal of trouble getting into warehouses to show visitors what life. So they built this gallery so everybody can see the warehouse. They've also, if you'll note, left up ventilation at the top so the smell hopefully will come through from the warehouse. It has a bed. If you go across the road to the newer warehouses, where they're not open so much, you don't really need to drink a thing, you just stand there and smell. <laughs> Hey, 